Hello, I'm Chuck Phillip, and welcome to another edition of Southern Home Talk. I already have three other episodes up on the Causeway, the Bayway Bridge, and Old 90. And so it also has some detail about this as well as far as the tunnels. But I figured I would go ahead and do a more focused one on this particular tunnel, the Bankhead. It was pretty much started around 1938 and got completed around 1941. And so what we're looking at is the entrance to this. It's pro this photograph is probably taken in the 50s. And the unfortunate thing about the bank head is it's only got 12 foot clearance and a lot of your trucks now are around 13 feet tall so a lot of them have hit the entrance of this. I mean quite a few especially here in the last year it seems like it's almost been like a daily count of them. And so I did a Google search. I've never have done that before just to check the bank head tunnel clearance but this is what came up. It tells you right there it's a 12 foot clearance and also says about the 13 feet 6 inches of a truck or I guess one of the newer ones and so what we're looking at now is the west entrance of the Wallace Tunnel uh, this was started around 1969 and completed around 73 on the other side and so they made these larger uh, these are actually 16 feet tall and so you can see in this photograph this is where they were actually laying the tunnel down in the Mobile River. Uh, this is for the Bankhead Tunnel, but both tunnels pretty much went the same way. Uh, they fabricated these tubes, they sunk them, and then they would send divers down there to weld them under water, then pump the water out. And you can see this is actually the the west entrance or west exit of the Bankhead Tunnel coming out of Government Street. And there's another photograph of them launching those tubes for the Bankhead uh, pretty much, uh, you can see these workers on the inside here uh, with the scaffolds and stuff. Uh, a lot of these workers are from ADSCO. Uh, ADSCO Shipbuilding and Dry Dock, or Alabama Dry Dock and Shipbuilding is what ADSCO stands for. Uh, they pretty much were the main workers that worked on both the Bankhead Tunnel in the late 1930s and then also the Wallace Tunnel in the late 60s. And so you can look at this photograph. This is where uh, they're actually marching through the tunnel or walking through it to celebrate the opening of it. So this has been around 1941. And my guess would be that a lot of these people are probably ASCO workers that actually helped build it. And that's another photograph when it came out on the east side of it. You know, when the tunnel opened up in 1941, uh, it did require a toll. And it's 25 cents. You can see this is basically a flyer for that and they had these toll booths here and they had guards actually had quite a few of them they were more than just the ones you see that manned these booths they were all through the tunnel as well and so what they would do is they would sell these ticket books like you see uh, George Fuller Sr. that's who that is uh, he's one of the he was the developer of Spanish Fort you buy these tickets books and when you got hand, got to the guard at the booth you would hand him one of these tickets in fact they had to pull it off the ticket book or, or it wouldn't matter so it wouldn't be valid if it was pulled already pulled off of it and so this is a picture here you know showing that the toll is still going well in 1970 uh, it pretty much ended around 75 and this is a picture of the inside of the bankhead tunnel and of course the point I'm trying to show in this illustration is that you can see these railings here on the right hand side it's got a lot of service pipes going through it now that's probably conduit uh, for electrical service but uh, none of that was there during the, the 50s, 60s, 70s or probably all the way up to the time it was built and what you had was a this was just a big catwalk and there were guards uh, stationed about every hundred yards down this thing and I remember uh, going through the tunnel back in the 60s and they would uh, some of them would actually be kind of clownful about their job and wave and blow their whistle. It was kind of fun. I actually kind of miss those guys. It's actually, and this is where I kind of sort of want to make a point. I don't recall ever having stuck vehicles in the tunnel, at least on the east entrance of it, because I don't think you could get past this, and that's what they took down after probably around 75 or a little bit thereafter 
is when they took all this down. And so now there's no obstructions uh, to prevent a oversized truck from coming through. There's none right up here. You can see it's got some chains hanging. It's got some alarms on it. I think it's even got a laser thing that goes across. But I think what could be possibly one of the problems is because it's just a chain hanging there, you know, well, they probably think they got a little bit more clearance than what the chains are allowing. And not only that, they kind of may feel obligated to keep going because it's kind of past this turn to the right. So I think this may add to the to the problems we're having at the, at least at the east entrance of it. And this is going to be on the west entrance right here. Uh, there again, it states it in bold letters, 12 foot height clearance. And but this is actually higher than 12 feet. And so uh, I think that what happens is, is once they get past this that says well I cleared the sign at the front so I'm just going to keep going so let's watch this little clip here and so what I would do is I would actually put one of those I-beams there underneath that sign and probably on both sides of the tunnel. That may stop a lot of the problems of people coming through because if it tears the roof off your truck before you get into the tunnel or the air conditioner is off the top of your RV, well, you know, at least that damage is done prior to it making to the tunnel. And so I think that's what I would go back if I was one of the road engineers, which I'm not, I'm, I'm not qualified to do this. I'm just being an armchair uh, engineer. I think I would go back and re-entertain uh, putting those sort of systems back in place because those seem to have worked. And so what happens is you, you have these truckers that are uh, using their GPS. And from what I understand, uh, some of these GPSs does not give the clearance of the bankhead tunnel. So they're following that. And so the next thing you know, uh, they hear all this crunching and crumbling going on top of their cab and now they're stuck in the tunnel and so there you have it and so and especially if it's on the uh, on the west entrance because if it's at the west entrance well there's no way to really get out of this jam right here because you're kind of trapped by the walls on both sides of it and so now you're, gonna, you're wondering what the heck just hit my truck you know, and then you have all these people that are trapped with you coming up to you, won't know what the heck happened. And then you're stuck having to wait for emergency crews to come and pull you out of there. And also they may have to move some of the other people out of the way too. And it may take the authorities a, a little bit of time to get to you, depending on how far out they are and what other kind of calls they're dealing with. And not only that, they're going to have to get around a lot of blocked traffic too it's just going to be a it's a big mess once you get in that what i would call a fish trap right there at that west entrance and so once the authorities do get there they're probably not going to be too happy and neither are the people that are stuck with you they're going to be mad too and so here you are going to have to be explaining to uh, all kinds of different authorities probably the city police and state troopers uh, highway department, who knows what else. The fire department's probably going to be mad because they had to get called out. And then you're going to have all your good buddies going south on you, uh, calling up on the CB radio, uh, telling all the truckers what just happened. And so, you know, that word's going to go out across the radio, and they're going to be laughing at you. And then the news is going to get involved, and you're going to be doing interviews with the news crews and then the, also the passengers that got stranded with you, uh, they're going to be complaining on the news about it. And there may even be some news stations making fun of you because of this. So, you know, you should really think pretty good about before you make this trip through this tunnel. It can cause you all kinds of embarrassment. I don't know what the fines are for, you know, not paying attention to those warning signs. But I'm sure it's not cheap. You're probably going to have to pay cash, you know, if you're from out of town. And at best, they may even give you one of these bankhead shirts that says, I'd hit that.
Now, these shirts are actually available. Now, I kind of want to put this in here. So, you know, we the people of Mobile, you know, we want to put this message out there for all you eastbound and westbound truckers to pay attention to the road signs. Pruitt, are you sure you know where this farm is? Just following the directions. Well, Dolphin, Dolphin Street? That's Dolphin. Yeah.